Welcome to The Advocate, where topical issues are discussed in a no-holds-barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. My myth is, with the insensitivity of the federal government towards persons with disabilities, mostly in relation to the COVID-19 situation and the relief funds. Baba Sholas is saying we should stop with the unnecessary hailing of our politicians over bare minimum. Kayode is talking about the injustice of the Nigerian justice system. Shola, who makes her debut, takes us through the legal issues with e-commerce. And finally, Tolu explains the cancel culture to us. Sit back. The panelists are here to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts after this break. COVID relief funds persons with disabilities. Back in July of this year, it was announced that the federal government would begin data collection to identify people with disabilities to benefit from the post-COVID relief funds. Chris Abbo writes in his article, The Executive Secretary, National Commission of Persons with Disabilities, NPWD, in a press conference, announced the plan of federal government through Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to transfer cash to 50,000 persons with disabilities as COVID-19 intervention fund. He stated that the ministry will implement the program through the commission, which would start identifying PWDs to benefit through a data capturing. And thereafter, the cash would be transferred to them electronically. Now, fast forward to the evening of Saturday, August 14th, and parents with children who have special needs, like myself, received notification that we should come to Teslim Balogun Stadium, Lagos, by 9 a.m. with our special needs child for data capture. Immediately, I had serious reservations. Firstly, the use of the abbreviation PWDs already pointed to the lack of consideration. They are actually real human people and not an association or entity to be abbreviated. Secondly, the federal government and its associates wanted all parents in Lagos to bring their children with disabilities to this one location one location in the whole of Lagos. As far as I'm aware, COVID is still here and so is the Delta variant. I could already imagine the scene, rowdy crowd, no social distancing and no organization. There was no way I was going and putting my child who has Down syndrome and a heart condition at risk. But I have that choice because I come from a place of privilege. For some parents, they had no choice but to go in chance of gaining access to crucial funds to aid their families given the des devastation of the past 18 months. I feel for these mothers and fathers who took their children with disabilities to the stadium. The government did not even consider how people would get to and from the location, given for many, mobility is a massive issue. Why not decentralize the exercise to the local level so that access would be much easier? Instead, these families and especially the children had to endure more trauma. In my opinion, this exercise was utterly reprehensible. From 9 a.m. to beyond 10 p.m., these families were there and many unfortunately unsuccessfully in the exercise. On top of the lateness, meant mosquitoes and hunger. As far as I know, all they were given was pure water and gala to sustain them. My heart and the heart of many of our special needs parents and advocates broke that day and many tears were shed. Why? Because it was a stark confirmation in physical form of what we already suspected. Our special needs children are not considered valuable as full human beings. The federal and Lagos state governments do not have sincere intentions and frankly do not truly really care for the state of our disabled people in this country. That is all eye and lip service. If there was true will behind this exercise, 
It would have been decentralized for easier access and consideration for those the funds are actually for. That corruption and wickedness is so bad to the point that they are literally stealing from the mouth of babes. So. I, you see, the, the, you say I'm stuttering, but I don't even know which words to use first. <laughs> you know, first of all, before we go into the, uh, the, the children uh, with special needs, and let's look at the idea of grouping people at one place. And it goes back to that attitude we have as a people. And that attitude is, we like to be, quote unquote, be in charge. We want to be, be yeah, the Mizak, I'm the one doing it. So that's why nobody, I'm, I, don't, I can't imagine how, like you said, all over Lagos, you bring in people to one place. During a pandemic. During a pandemic. pandemic. Even without the pandemic. pandemic. Yes. I, I want to learn from what happened during the is it immigration recruitment, uh, recruitment years ago where people died. And now you're bringing children with special needs. Mm -hmm. They don't have total control. They need help of someone and all that. And you see, that's the same thing we do with our retirees. Mm -hmm. Where we say 80-year-olds, 70-year-olds come for recapture almost. At a point, we have to tell mom, leave it. <laughs> is, that, is, there anything, is there any big deal? Yeah. So... That one on its own is an issue that we need to trash both in government and outside government as a people. Now, the idea of addressing these uh, children, like I like the, what you said, that they are not, it's not, a, it's not an association where it's okay, oh, these people. These are our children. They are human beings. They have that, the only thing is they have needs. And even in other climes, in spite of the needs, some of these children go ahead to be very influential and resourceful for the nation. But do we even have, okay, let's even say the, the capturing is done. What plans do we have for these kids? That for me is the question. What yeah. plans do we have? Yeah. How do we, okay, we just capture them, give them how much? Yeah. Like I said, gala and water. Yeah. So, it's for not me, sustainable. For me, yeah, for it's me, the biggest problem. I mean, wh while you're talking, in my head, I was just picturing a meeting room where human beings that have brains that function have sat down to say, "We want to <laughs> deploy an intervention." Right? These guys have brains. They're thinking. They thought, "Okay, it's a great idea." Oh, there are people with oh, disabilities. Oh, let's help. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm sorry. Let's call them that. Right? Mm -hmm. Then, when you decided you made that decision, mm -hmm. did you? Now ask yourself, how do we execute this? Like thinking people. Mm -hmm. You know, my problem is just the thinking. It's, it's a thinking problem. You know, did you ask yourself, well, there's a pandemic. Did you ask yourself, on the average, how many people will come to this place? Did you ask yourself, when they get there, what is the process for accreditation? Mm -hmm. Did you ask yourself, what's the process for the actual, ex from, ex from mm -hmm. accreditation to, you know, registration and then to the actual disbursement? I mean, this is not rocket science, guys. Their needs are different. This is not rocket yes. science. And what about for the welfare while they're there? Yeah, well, exactly. exactly. I mean, it's a whole, I mean, it's, you're trying to give money to what? 5,000 people, 200,000 people. You don't even know. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, I, I, think, it, I think it's just a thinking problem. Because in my head, I'm thinking, this was probably a commissioner somewhere, or a governor somewhere, or a minister somewhere. These people went to school now. Who, I mean, unfortunately, yeah. might have meant well. Yeah. Let's not repeat the entire yeah, thing. Unfortunately, it might have good intentions. Oh, let's cater for this, you know, the children with special needs and all that. But I don't, like know, about, I don't said, know about intentions. The implementation. <laughs> you yeah. don't know about the intentions. I don't know about yes. intentions. Yes. Because, it reads again, more yeah. as a PR exercise that mm. went yeah. back. That's why I say I don't know about intentions. To be honest, yeah. okay. because who did they consider? Who did they talk to? Who did they go and meet? Who are the yeah. stakeholders for yeah, this? Exactly. I do know that they trained about 70 people um, from, the, I think it's called the NIPPD, or um, it's a, a association, I think, of intellectual people with, disabilities. with um, disabilities. And uh, they've trained 70 people to, who are disabled some of the cake, uh, data capture. But that's the only thing, like, community-wise, I think, that was it done. Mm -hmm. um, really, if this is meant to be something that's happening over 36 states, it's also something the federal government has control over mm -hmm. and, the league, and the state governments will obviously be implementing. However, the actual work, I don't think anybody really thought about the, the it. Is, the actual the people. people. Yes, yeah. 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 the people. The, the thing is, they had good intentions. I want to assume. Yeah, yeah. Assume. Assume. Yeah. Assume. 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 Yeah. yeah, no, no. It's okay to assume. I don't think I'm going to say that. I want to assume they had good intentions. Yeah. 
But the thing is, what would have been the solution would have been to share this between the local government. Thank you. So if I stay in Ali Mosho mm -hmm. and I close to Ali Mosho, mm. a child with disabilities has challenges with even moving to that location. So that's even the first it's a mobility problem. Yes. Yes. You give me, you bring me to somewhere close to where to I can exactly. access these resources. Exactly. And that's not rocket difficult for me. Or even go to their schools. Exactly. But I don't know what Baba Shiva is thinking back, back then in the UK. I know yes. your case is different in the UK. You guys are well, you have a structure. I was going to say, let me come from another angle. That I, I think it's funny that in 2021, the federal government of Nigeria still believes that every child with the, or with disabilities is poor, you know, uh, because if not, who sat down and thought the best thing we can do is to share money? I mean, this throwing money at problems is the reason why the poverty levels in Nigeria is increasing. And, you know, let's not, let's not kill ourselves. Nobody had good intentions. These guys are going to pay for these funds and justify it with this fruitless exercise. Uh, it's very annoying to see that even despite all the criticisms for this uh, conditional cash transfer, you know, schemes mm. that have been in, in the midst of this, Nigeria has continued to do worse, you know, on the poverty index. But yet, they still think that the, the only solution they can provide for people living with disabilities during COVID is to give them, share 10,000 10, naira for them. I mean, if Toyo's kid had gone there, I don't think the 10,000 naira would have done much, made, made a difference to her or to even the poorest kids. Well, you know, it's so always, I, it's always I, like, it's always like, you know, we're always, we do, we keep doing the same things. Even when we've seen that, it didn't work for normal people. Uh, Baba so, Baba so and then now we're going to, you know, do a, the same thing again. a really, really good point, especially in terms of throwing money at things. We actually have to tackle the problems, and it's not just about throwing money. So Up next is actually Baba, Baba Shola. Stay with us. <sighs> Why we must stop hailing politicians. A politician builds a makeshift wooden bridge across a wide gutter and invites dignitaries to a fanfare to commission the contraption. Proudly erects a signboard there with his name boldly on it, splashes pictures on social media. I am not subbing anyone, honestly. We applaud, we hail the politician because we remember suddenly that there has not been a project like this in the area for 50 years. This is a first we say conveniently, forgetting that this is the year 2021. The former students of a public school put funds together to build a toilet for the school. They invite the commissioner or permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education in the state to commission, commission it. The government official shows up proudly to cut the tape of a toilet in a school that they are paid by us to run, but that, but that has now ended up having a basic but compulsory facility such as a toilet built by private citizens. The people who pay for the toilet hail the commissioner for taking time out of their busy schedule to attend. I have concluded that there is something seriously wrong with the Nigerian public office holder. But the disease is not half as bad as, the, as that which is plaguing the Nigerian people. Yes, the suffering masses. We complain about how hard and bad things are on a daily basis. Yet, when the time comes to take a stand, we are the chorus leaders and the applause commanders. We just love it. It is almost as if it is part of some custom or tradition to show gratitude to ineffective public office holders. It is as if we disagree that public officials owe us, and by us, I mean their bosses. Yes, we are the bosses. The citizens value for our money. These people actually all swore to an oath 
one they disregard almost on a per second basis. Our politicians in Nigeria are some of the highest paid in the world, and I mean legally and illegally. Yet, when they embezzle billions of Naira and give us substandard roads, bridges, and other infrastructure, captains of industry and traditional leaders will line up to sing their praises. Now, let me take you somewhere else, to the UK, where the UK government spent an estimated 500 billion pounds just to support UK citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. Nobody clapped for UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. In fact, all they have done is question his methods, policies, and preparedness. Boris Johnson rides in a two-car convoy. Nobody claps for that. He sometimes goes, goes to work or about his duties in public transport. Nobody claps. Roads are built and commissioned without fanfare, no foundation laying ceremony or groundbreaking. Nobody claps. Now imagine this was Nigeria. One would begin to think the people who live in these countries are absolutely heartless or ungrateful. But there is a simple reason they don't clap. It is because there is no reason to clap. Public servants are servants after all. In fact, I see them more as paid slaves. They are being funded by taxpayers' funds to serve their masters, the people. So why should the masters clap for their servants when they do a job they are handsomely compensated to do? Not to talk of them drooling over the most mundane achievements. A governor awards the construction of a six kilometer road to a contractor who is his friend or crony at an exorbitant value. The contractor does a shabby job, but by the grace of God, God with small letters, just manages to complete the, the project. The governor and the contractor share the profits, but the masses who get a badly built road are the ones who organize praise and worship sessions for the governor for building a footpath where an expressway should be. Nigeria is still way off the mark in terms of development, and this is not by accident. Public hospitals and schools are an eyesore, institutions of deep shame, I call them. This hailing of public officials has to stop today. Ah, absolutely. Uh, well, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't <laughs> know why. Take a minute to take you. Yes, exactly. I know. <laughs> why was the commissioner there to cut ribbon for toilets? Our mentality. To begin with? Yeah. There's no need yeah. for you to. Why did we invite him? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Someone invited him. Yeah. Yeah. Invite him. For, for for toilet or for 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 um, no. cutting of ribbon for a uh, for a window no. uh, at a bridge. local government yeah. uh, no. office. Or a wooden bridge. Or the yeah. wooden bridge. So I think I think it's a it's a fundamental problem. You know, is that we don't understand the meaning of the word service. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, or, if, servant. If it, or servant. You know, I don't want to say servant. You know, if you say servant, they won't show up. So let's even show If you say public servant, they won't show up. So let's, you know, service. Mm -hmm. The word service is derived from the word serve. And to serve means to be the servant, which brings you back to the word servant, right? If we understood that fundamentally, that this person is here to serve me, you know, then it, it changes the game instantly. Yeah. But you see, for, for us, it's more of a game of, you know, I'm here to help you. Is that thing we're talking about, the Mesa complex? Yes. So I've built a road. Exactly. I have a right to put a billboard yeah. and then say road constructed by. Yeah. Sir, this is what you're paid to do. By the way, mm. it's public service. Even if you're not paid enough, that's the whole point. But I think it right? goes back to why, why people go into politics. It's not to serve. Mm -hmm. and it's not here. It's not, not here. to exactly. serve. Exactly. Because they know that the structurally it's made to go and make money. That's where you go and make your money, you go and make your name. Mm. You're not there to serve, mm. you're not there to do good, you're there to enrich yourself and your cronies. Mm. So we also mm. need to understand that, that yes. that is actually the lay of the land. It's great to say, oh, we're meant to be public servants, public yes. service, but let's yes. look at the reality on ground. Mm -hmm. That's not how it's looked and perceived as, mm. right? General public perceives it as His Excellency, her excellency, mm. excellence of mm. words. Mm. I, yes. I really despise yes. having to say his excellency. Yes, 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 what yes. have you done that is excellent? Yes. I mean, what is excellent about you? Yeah, but you see, okay, you go. Okay, I, I want to say that if you go to some local governments mm. where young youth core members serve, you hear about some youth core members who build bridges 
using their mm -hmm. own allow mm -hmm. allowance mm -hmm. as allow we you know as they use their 23,500 i don't know what they're pay, uh, paid mm -hmm. now yes but they use something that's little to build bridges to to offer community. free medical care right. so you're wondering so why and do we a, have and leaders? There's a local government chairman in exactly. that state, and, and there's a governor in that state, yeah. and, and there's a councillor in that exactly. state, and those people earn, mm. you know, and more money. money but, but, but you see, what, why I, I want to look at it from this angle. You see, we're talking about the government or the politicians. I'll, li I'll even say, let's take, let's leave the politicians alone. Why? Now let's look at this. An average Nigerian now, you go to a shop by the roadside mm. to buy something. The woman is there, busy talking on phone. And mm -hmm. telling you, I'm busy, just wait, just wait. Mm -hmm. And there are other shops there. Oh and you see a Nigerian there waiting yeah. for, for the woman busy. to finish talking. Yes. The yes. question I always ask is, why won't you just move on to the next shop? Mm -hmm. Let her know that if you're not serving me well, yes. I will move to another person. Yes. I have an option. Service. That That's word it. Service. So yes. what, we, what, what I'm saying in essence is that that is what we bring into politics. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. we've been so battered over the years that we've lost Thank our you. sense of demanding for our rights. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now we just take anything goes. Yeah. We're well, like a man that gives somebody money. Okay, hold this for me. When I need it, I'll come for it. Mm -hmm. Then you go there and say, oh, your money, I've kept it somewhere, but I can loan you money. Then you keep taking yeah. a loan, taking a loan, your and there's money. interest, and there's yeah. interest, whereas this guy okay. is keeping your money for you. Is that thing. You know that syndrome? What's that syndrome where people... Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm. Mm. You know, I, I use this example all the time. Mm. Is You know, let's say you, you're married to a man that is mm. an abuser, mm. right? Yeah. And he he's just abuses you emotionally, physically, and then never comes home. You know, the day he comes home at 7 p.m., you say, ah. Thank God. Or comes at, at midnight, you say, thank God. Ah, he even came home he today. Came, he ah, you call your friends and he came today. He came today. Is that, is that stock holding? Is, is that we've been so battered, we don't even understand. We don't our even rights. know how, what our rights are. And Someone builds a road, we heal them. Why? The that's, that's, yeah. that's the and, and it's even so sad that you see some commissioner saying, you say the governor is so ready to work. Excuse me, our sir, that's why we voted him there. They're telling me he's ready to work. So, I mean, but, but this he cares about you. Hello. This applauding, not even of uh, mediocrity. Right, I yes. think, Baba Shola, you've been very kind. Yeah. <laughs> the applauding of everything substantive. Yeah. As long as it's finished, or even it doesn't even need to finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many uncompleted yeah, elephants right. see, see, yeah. projects. It's not about the person that came. Mm -hmm. the one that came didn't do anything. So yeah. we're so yeah. apathetic mm -hmm. as a population. People, yeah. Um, that's. For them, if nobody's holding them accountable, why should they bother to hold themselves That's accountable? That's it. Mm. You know, the interesting, I'm, thing, mm -hmm. the interesting thing is I don't think anybody even measures uh, politicians' performance against their promises. No. Yeah. Anymore, people would just kind of like, wait for the guy to show up in your community, uh, erect a borehole, commission it, you go there, you clap, you say, ah, the governor has tried. We never had a borehole in my community. You don't say he promised us X, Y, and Z, and he's only mm -hmm. done A. You know, and that is not good enough. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I always use my uncle as an example when he was chairman of the Lagos State Health Management Board, that he not only refurbished hospitals, but he insisted that anyone, any member of his family, including his wife who was Irish, had to use those same public hospitals. He said, because how can I tell the public to use a hospital that my family are not using? You've got to, I've got to show that confidence. You know, and it's that kind of service that is missing in Nigeria when people are ready to put themselves and show that, look, I've done this bit of work and I, I have confidence that it works. Well, I think um, that's a massive, massive point. <laughs> and we could go all day on it. Um, yes. The injustice of Nigeria's justice system is next with Oluwa Kayode. Stay with us. A country can only develop where there is equity, probity and accountability, or at least a semblance of it. Globally, there is no executive that is incorruptible. People who are saddled with the responsibility of managing state resources are likely to abuse the privileges extended to them. From America to Zimbabwe, everywhere capitalist thrives, there is bound to be an abuse. How then do these economies thrive? How do they manage an image of probity and accountability? The reason is simple, the judiciary. In order to run a successful capitalist economy, you need an active judiciary, a judiciary that is functional, independent, and autonomous. 
effective and efficient. Simply put, we need a judiciary that works. Can the Nigerian judiciary be said to be active? At the mention of the judiciary, an average Nigerian cringes. We shudder at the thought of standing in the witness box. To an average Nigerian, facing trial is as good as being charged to court or being condemned. There is no relationship between the judiciary and the people. The people do not feel the judiciary is there for their good. No trust. This makes it impossible for an average citizen to take someone to court, let alone take the government to court. When the executive goes wrong, we commit them to the court of God in heaven rather than the court of justice on earth. Because as the saying goes, that means anyone you cannot handle, there is God there who can handle such a person for you. We know how much influence the executives have on the judiciary. We accuse the executive of controlling judicial cases, and the outcome of these cases tend lend credence to our accusations. But wait a minute. How many cases are prosecuted smoothly at the judiciary? Even cases between two individuals drag on forever. Case in sight is Evans, the kidnapper. He's been on for about four years. This is a case that everybody in the nation is interested in. No known politician or no known political influence, no tribal bias, no need for regional balance in this case. Everybody wants one and same thing, justice. But it's taken four years. And during this period, Bill Cosby was charged, sentenced, and his charges reviewed. George Floyd's killer cop was tried and sentenced. Oscar Pistorius was charged, tried, and sentenced. Samson Siasia was tried, sentenced. He challenged his case at the Court of Arbitration for Sports and got a lesser charge. Osh Poppy's arrest, he was charged, and the case has begun, and I'm sure it will conclude before the end of Evans' case. A case that has no political twist, no pressure from the executive arm, has taken four years. Does justice have a will in Nigeria? Does it grind at all? And there are so many cases as such in Nigeria. Cases drag for years until both the appellant and the respondent get tired of the case and stop showing up in courts. Is this an indication that no arm of government works in Nigeria, which way Nigeria? <laughs> I, I think we all must acknowledge that there's two justice systems, hmm. one for the wealthy and even upper middle class, yeah. and one for the masses, poor man, yeah. the poor masses. Because you have so many people who are, who should we say, have been, um, are really innocent or their crimes are so little, mm. like something like stealing bread, but they have spent years waiting for their trial yes. and they're languishing in yeah. jail. Prison. Mm. Not prison yet, too. Mm. in jail. In jail. Mm. And it's a real problem. Yeah. Um, and judiciary doesn't seem to care. And it also makes mm. you aware of just how many cases there must ah, be. There. Yes. Um, I don't know why it takes so long to address cases. I don't know why they insist on keeping people in jail who are non-violent, mm. right? Mm. Or should have a process for some of these lighter uh, offenses, cases. Yes. Offenses, yeah. yes, when a person is actually charged to, when a person commits a oh, crime, yeah. Yeah. The lawyers, yeah. <laughs> okay, when a person commits a crime, yeah. you know, and the matter is reported to the police, the person is not supposed to be detained for more than 48 hours. That is what the criminal justice law, even the ACJ, the Administration of Criminal Justice Law of Lagos State, states so. But today you go to the police station, you see people there for five days, seven days, and nothing they're is happening. Charged. Yeah, they're not being charged to court. Even those who do their matters are being tried to, um, try, um, charged to court. You hear certain delays that the magistrate is in, in town, so the person just keeps languishing. In, in the police cell. Mm -hmm. Now, the condition of the police cell is not, is not mm -hmm. anything to write him about because mm -hmm. he hears stories about, you know, they being beaten, mm -hmm. being bullied yes. by somebody else inside in the yeah. cell, yeah. yet them coming out, no food, 
the rice is um, bad, the, the food is not well cooked. Yeah. So, and all that. Exactly. So now, there's also a situation where the police also take advantage of these persons, these suspects. They are not... They are not... Um, uh, they, yeah, because the, the law right. says that a person is presumed innocent, innocent. until proven innocent. guilty. Yeah. So the person is not yet a criminal. The person is just a suspect. Mm. So a suspect could actually be innocent. Not yeah. in Nigeria. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> once, once you hear the word suspect in Nigeria, it yes. connotes that yes, the has gone. Is, is dead. You know, exactly. Pretty much. It's pretty and much. I think it goes to the fact that people don't know their rights. Yeah, you know, exactly. to a large extent. Exactly. You know, I've heard a lot of cases where people come and say that I say, "What well, bail is free?" Mm. You know, mm. people don't even understand that bail is free. You mm. right? Mm. You you have to do something, mm. and that just goes to a lot of there's a, a lot of education required mm. in that sense. When people are arrested, for instance, mm -hmm. or when people are invited, you know, to police station, or when people actually are, you know, sued. There are different levels to these things, and there are different laws that apply in, those play in, in, in different circumstances. But because most people are not even aware of what the law says, mm. they're not aware of what their rights are. Yeah. You know, so a lot of times, you know, people take advantage of those things. I've heard that in police stations, once a lawyer shows up, you know, the, the it, police it, get a bit you know, aggressive, changes, you know, because yeah. they're like, you know what, this person knows a bit more than the average Nigerian. Nigerian. Yeah. You know, so this, is, this goes to every Nigerian. I believe that everyone should arm themselves with at least some semblance of education with mm. what the law says, what mm. is required. Mm. And you know, I had a friend that took last month to court and he won. Mm. You know, it, I mean, he's a troublemaker. But <laughs> again, <laughs> he would take well, we that law, but he had to know, yeah. but yeah. Had to know yeah. that he yeah. had those rights yeah. Yeah. Right? for him to have thought. Mm -hmm. He took them because... And, he, and they, you know what's even more? He should know. have made that victory public. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. To yeah. Let for other people, people yeah. know. And yeah. Yeah. Me. But you see what's even more I mean, instructive here is that, listen, we're talking about the violations mm -hmm. of people's rights. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're even, I'm looking at a case where everything is gone through and you're in courts. Mm -hmm. And the process yeah. just drags on mm -hmm. endlessly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why... Why you, does it drag for, on endlessly? That's why we don't know. It feels like you're running a campaign. Like a you need process, so much money. Like I, I don't get it. You need Oh, so the it's a systemic, yeah. Problem. Yeah. Well, the systemic problem, I think that was, Maybe. That was, that was about So case. those are the things we need yeah. to look at. And that's why I said that, okay, we accuse the executive. They have, they have to take all the blame. We accuse the legislative. They have to take all the blame as well. Yeah. But then we ignore the justice system, of which if that functions, if you're able to function to the extent that you know that if I take you to court, I can win. Mm -hmm. yes. The average legis I mean, the average lawmaker will be a lot more careful. Yeah. But he knows he won't even try it, first of yes. all. Then secondly, he has all the sounds to back him up. And yes. you, how exactly. many can you have? So there's also generally that perception that, yeah. you know that thing they say that, that nobody who first call police, they, nah, they, uh, they, uh, so there's, <laughs> there's yeah. that perception that if this person goes to court first, then, you know, naturally what, what they happened? win. But there's sometimes where yeah, if you're work that way. actually you not can, guilty, you, you can, can fight win. your case. Baba Shala, what do you think? Well, As a round -up. I was shocked when to said bail was free uh, yeah. because in every, in every police station there's a forget about it. Okay, there's a sticker that says bail is free right there. Uh, but you try and get it for free, and then you know whether it's free or not. <laughs> but on a serious note, I, I, I mean, although I can't even make a point, um, you know, the justice system is you know painful. It's 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 almost. I mean, that's it's almost like the last resort that has been abandoned. Mm. Now I say this because he mentioned some criminals, Evans, who has a kidnapping case. So, you know, the, the justice system shouldn't even be thinking about Evans as, is he innocent or guilty? They look at the facts and they should be able to throw him in jail or free him in, in a short space of time. But, but let us look at Bachelor. another case yeah. uh, of Elza Zaki and his wife. Even if yeah. I mean, the, these people were shot by, this, by soldiers. They were shot. His wife had bullets, uh, bullet wounds when she was arrested. Yeah. But they were, they've been detained for more than five years. And, and, and that's what we are on talking about. On a charge. Barashala. On, on a charge of causing the killing of the members of their sect. Mm. Now, they didn't have any arms at the time. So, let, I mean, that just shows you how painful it is because these guys were unarmed. They were the ones that were shot at. They yeah. were wounded when they were held in custody. But it, it took a court five years to be able to establish that they actually I, did not. That, that, that's the painful the part, Baba Shola. But you know what? This justice system is something we can talk about all day long. <laughs> but we need to move on. Absolutely. We just need to think through it and make sure that we get our justice system working. But let's go over to Shola, who is giving us a lecture in e-commerce. Stay with us. 
legal issues in e-transactions. E-commerce is the buying and selling of goods and services through the internet. It has also been defined as the sharing of business information, the maintaining of business relationships, and the conducting of transactions by means of telecommunication networks. This has led to the emergence of electronic commerce through which commercial transactions are conducted between parties from different parts of the world and who may never see themselves in their lifespans. However, the emergence of electronic commerce has also brought with it a number of legal and social economic problems, especially in the developing nations such as Nigeria, problems which pose significant challenges to the legal regime of electronic commerce in those countries. It is not restricted solely to the actual buying and selling of products, but includes pre-sale and post-sale activities. In more liberal terms, once a contract of sale is effected between a buyer and a seller, using such electronic means as the electronic mail, regardless of distance or any geographical barrier, it is within the province of electronic commerce. The objectives of e-commerce include the facilitation of international cooperation through trade, making goods and services available to consumers all over the world, irrespective of distance, the expansion of the consumer base for manufacturers or producers of goods and services, and a reduction in the cost of service delivery by delivering this electronically. It encourages a single world trading system, which is facilitated by access through electronic means to goods and services from different parts of the world. Consumers in e-commerce are faced with a number of risks arising from the general lack of understanding of the operations of the internet. This has been compounded by a number of legal issues which have been largely taken care of in more advanced and sophisticated countries, but which issues are still being grappled with in developing countries such as Nigeria, where internet trading is something fairly new. There is no legislation on the protection of data presently in Nigeria, and the situation portends a great danger for consumers in e-commerce. It is suggested that a cue be taken from the United Kingdom where there are principles that govern the protection of the data or communication of the parties in all internet transactions. The determination of the moment when a contract can be said to have come into existence on the internet, giving rise to the existence of rights and duties as between the parties, has been one of the vexed issues in e-commerce. The special nature of internet contracts has made most of the common law rules applicable to commercial contracts inapplicable to such contracts. For example, websites are designed in such a way as to constitute an invitation to make an offer and not situations of real offers by the web owners. However, in sales over the internet, both the display and the actual sale are often bonded. Making payment for goods and services bought through the internet poses unique problems because of the fact that the parties may be thousands of kilometers apart. The problems associated with internet payments are in relation to the inability of the internet to guarantee the safety of such payments and the possibility of duplicating payment since a computer could potentially become a forger of digital banknotes. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> a computer can be a forger of, of, yes, of, of digital banknotes. Yeah. It's not very reliable. Me, I'm a complete Luddite. So <laughs> that so, just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a matter of fact, I've heard a lot of I mean, stories of people with their you know, experiences with mm. uh, what they call online vendors. Yes, online Instagram vendor. vendors. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot to be said. Mm. You know, again, I think that it's also a problem of education. People are not aware of what, you know, what, I mean, I've, a lot of things you, you just talked about, I've never heard about them before in terms of the legal mm -hmm. parts of it, right? Mm -hmm. People just feel they have something to sell. Or you have the money for it, you pay for it. Yes. Whether they rent the service or not, you know, it's not really their business. And you know, customer service is a big, big problem in Nigeria, anyways. Yeah, exactly. You know, so even when you go physically with your yeah, cash in your briefcase, you know, they, they really don't care. Not someone that is over the phone, you know. So they just look at you know, they, they hide over under that cover of you know the internet. So they're able to do a lot of things that because they know well, I mean, my house come and beat me. Some of them will say yes. that, right? What yeah. what's the worst you can do? What you can do is go and rant on social media. But the next customer, so I think there has to be laws that are put in place, mm -hmm. for, and there's a consumer protection council. Yes. I think they need to look into, mm -hmm. the, you know, internet transactions and uh, e-commerce, mm -hmm. and then put those laws in place that actually guarantees. Because I've had a few, you know, bad experiences. I'd rather just walk there. So, so mm -hmm. as 
as work as I am. So I just let me just go to the store, fill it with my hands, <laughs> right? <laughs> Pay my money and go my way. Yes. So, but there are a few things that you have to buy, you know, and there are a few stores that are obviously more responsible than others, online, yes. you know, That's online. Yeah. So you just, you know, basically pick your battles or pick your death. You know, yeah, and the challenge of... The what I ordered against what I bought mm. or what I saw. Oh, like, you know, yeah, like you see, have a whole, uh, you can have a whole by the time you deliver, <laughs> by the time the shoe is delivered to you, yeah. you're seeing a different color of the shoe. Yeah. So, so in that case, what is the legal, you know, what is the legal process in that case? Can you sue? I mean, it's an, it's a, it's an e-commerce entity. Mm. Yes. How do you sue that kind of entity, right? And yes. Then, uh, are they going to answer? Yes, you can return and you can ask for a refund. In the event yes, that you, don't get one. you can ask for a refund. You can you can even enforce a legal action. But the problem you mentioned about the judiciary, mm -hmm. when you, inf you, you you sue over a matter, just a issue of fifteen k, mm -hmm. you know you're mm -hmm. taking the matter to court. By the time you calculate the filing mm -hmm. fees, going back and forth, <laughs> you do like it. what's the point? You just yeah. let it go. Just but it also it says it in terms of um, the structure of these e-commerce platforms, right? Mm -hmm. So some are you know, set up very well, they have processes, so they, there's agreements, you have to, you know, they have yeah. checks yeah. and balances. But you bring up Instagram. Mm. And that's probably the number one marketplace mm. digitally yes. in Nigeria. God bless his soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so while there are these actual platforms, major platforms that exist in Nigeria mm. that have these kind of things in place, you can return goods, they hold their vendors accountable. accountable. Yes. 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 However, the, I would say probably if the, the average person is using Instagram, is using Twitter, mm. who is buying and selling. Mm. And so they're just going to do, you have to, you're really just at the behest of oh, that person. That's true. That's and true. if they mm. are willing to refund you or change or and give the customer service, mm. and there are lots of good vendors who yeah. are, yeah. but unfortunately, there'll be just as many who aren't. I've bought on platforms where I've bought things twice and I've returned it twice. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who's bought, I don't want to mention names, he bought some things and when he bought it, he returned it and they actually returned his money for him, mm -hmm. to wow, him. He refunded it. But the truth is that, I mean, outside all those ones, those are mm -hmm. the established mm -hmm. ones you're talking, mm -hmm. you're referring to. But outside the established ones, the, the major thing we should look at is what should a buyer, a potential client or customer mm. look out for when you go online mm. to shop what are the limitations because for example there i know that when you're shopping online in in i was going to say ghana in nigeria and when you use your card it acts it sends a, an otp to your phone okay. but when you're shopping online at a foreign and international website mm. it doesn't send you otp it deducts immediately immediately so these are some of the things we need to look at to regulate but i don't know what your baba shola thinks I think, again, when I hear the word legal, I just think about the courts and what we just said. <laughs> but uh, And I also think about the cost of getting a lawyer to to regulate, uh, to intervene in a small matter. Now, I think uh, what the only thing I can advise is that anybody who is, who is shopping online should actually refer, I mean, all, all websites should have a returns policy, uh, which you can refer to in case you do buy something that you think uh, you want to return and the, the issues. And that returns policy should inform what the process is and you know what your agreement is with the company. So I think before you buy anything from the website, read the returns policy. Uh, that said, an agreement is only as good as the person who wrote it. So even though people, we know some people who have uh, copied and pasted people, other people's uh, policies into their websites. So, you know, it may just be a mere formality, but at least if you're Dealing with, dealing with reputable companies and when you do, check the returns policies. Thank you very much, Mr. Babashala. Tolu is next after the break. Stay with us. Cancel culture. Is there a better way? This is how Wikipedia defines cancel culture. I quote, Cancel culture or call out culture is a modern form of ostracism in which someone is thrust out of social or professional circles whether it be online, on social media, or in person. Notably, many people claiming to have cancelled, to have been cancelled, often remain in power and continue their careers as before. End of quote. Those subject to this shunning are usually referred to as having been cancelled. The expression cancel culture has mostly negative connotations and is commonly used in debates on free speech and censorship. 
The notion of cancel culture is a variant on the term call-out culture and constitutes a form of boycotting or shunning involving an individual, often a celebrity, who is deemed to have acted or spoken in a questionable or controversial manner. Moreover, some cancellations have also been defended as exercising free speech and promoting accountability. Others criticize cancel culture as creating a chilling or bullying effect. But the question is, where do we draw the line between cancel culture and bullying? It is worthy of note to mention that most of the cancellation happens by those who have less power than the person or persons being cancelled. So while we are passionate and concerned about censorship, when is it okay not to cancel? When is it okay to be silent? It can be argued that the silence culture has also done us a lot of harm, as many atrocities have been swept under the rug of silence that should have been brought to book. Now, when and how do we decide when to cancel or when to be quiet? Or should we rather err on the side of caution? The other concern is as the nature of all things cultural, cultural, it has a tendency to be created by a few for an intended good reason or for you know, good intentions, but also has a tendency to ride a wave and get washed off with the tide of time. But we must, hold, must continue to hold ourselves accountable, we must also act right, not for fear of being judged or being cancelled, but because we are self-respecting, responsible individuals. So what is the most sustainable way to speak to power or to popular figures without cancelling ourselves back to the silence which we feared as dangerous? Where is the critical balance? The Rotary Club four-way of the things we say or do comes to mind. So of the things we think, say, or do. One, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? I advocate that we'll be careful not to cancel ourselves out of reason. Instead, let us constructively criticize ourselves to growth and to progress. Hmm. Really interesting. <laughs> really interesting. I, you know, it's, it's that thing for me, you know, where do you draw the line? Because... Uh, I've seen, I've witnessed a few occasions where people have been called out online, uh, either for bad business practices, and you know, years down the line, we have found, you know, the the accusations to be true. There are also, you know, people who have, you know, been called out online for things that they they are said to have done, which are not true. I mean, I, I remember a sad incident where a young man committed suicide. Uh, I think a year ago or two. And, you know, it's, it's just being able to draw the line. I always say that, you know, we should not be silent when we see things being done in the wrong manner. But we should also think about it, like you said, what is the purpose of what I'm about to say? What good will it do? You know, I'm posting something on social media about someone else. Is it better to ask as a question and have that person answer so that it's not like I've just blatantly assumed that they're, they're, you know, they've done something illegal or wrong. I think it's very difficult in the heat of emotions to be able to get, you know, to find the proper way to do things. But I think if we just all stop for a minute or two to breathe and think about what we're doing, I think, you know, it will, mm. it will reduce uh, all the, you know, tension and, uh, you know, mishaps. All right. I, mean, I think that, I mean, it, in my view, the council culture blatantly stampedes people a lot of times into a movement that they might next really not be for. Because let's take, for example, where, and mainly amongst the youth and online nowadays, because let's take, for example, it, it, you're, there's a discussion going on in a particular area and you're speaking in different, I mean, not necessarily against it, but not for it. And suddenly, it's like you're cancelled. You're no longer relevant to that. So mm -hmm. for you to be relevant to the friends, you need That's to toe their line. Flow. So it's like you're stampeded into, okay, let's go with the flow. It's, when you said bullying, I said, yes, that's actually it. It's, it, it's a silent way of bullying you, especially for people who are not self-sufficient, who feel they need probably the approval of the lot to just flow the tide. And so, so what about this, right? And you see it a lot, and I'm so tired of celebrities apologizing. I'm done with it. Thank you. Mm. We were all different 10 years ago. 
right? Some of the things we said and did 10 years ago, if they bring it today, <laughs> but we're not the Call same people. Stop yeah. cancelling yeah. people for yeah, things they said 10, 15, even 20 years ago. Yeah. Five years ago, people change. Mm. And we need to give people that chance to grow yeah. and understand that every single person that exists on this earth does not agree with everything they did yeah. back, back then. then. Back then. Course, so course, but people, people just want to troll through the old history and bring it out and cancel people. And I just think, don't say sorry. Stop saying sorry. Mm -hmm. Because you are then helping them cancel you. Yeah, because if you're the, who, do you, yes. who do you need to cancel next? That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. yeah but, but that's yeah. not to say that. I mean, so my problem is the culture, mm -hmm. right? Is the thinking behind saying, you know, let's attack this person mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then get them to take an action because we attack them. Yeah. So it's a motive for me because I believe strongly as well that there's a lot of good that social media can do in terms of accountability. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you know, Shola said earlier that. Uh, uh, a politician promised something, mm -hmm. and it's five years down the line or two years down the line. It's okay to say, sir, I mean, post his, yeah, uh, his, his what's exactly. it called, his manifesto, and say, sir, mm -hmm. this was your manifesto two years ago. We're here to say any of these things. So there's a place mm -hmm. for calling out. I'm even afraid to say calling that. out yeah. now, you know. Yeah. I love you that know. you said like call out yeah. culture. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. it. I'm it's all for call out culture, yeah, not cancel culture. Yeah. It's, it's different. Because yeah. Listen, yeah. what counseling does, in my view, before you come in, so I'm just going to of your time, is that it stifles divergent views. Mm -hmm. So you all mm -hmm. must go in mm -hmm. a particular line of mm -hmm. thoughts. Yes. No other person must go wrong. Yes. I, I actually think that it also affects, if we keep, keeping, if we keep um, remaining quiet over mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. that come up every day, then what happens to somebody who faces that same challenge? Mm -hmm. The person feels intimidated already. For instance, in rape cases, mm -hmm. where you see young girls come out to say, I was raped, there's this attack, mm -hmm. this silent attack. Some people would like to keep quiet, but you hear some people come out to say, are you sure? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. As in, are you where sure? You? That, that question you know, alone. What were you wearing? Exactly. You know, so, yes. so most ladies who were raped just decide to keep quiet mm -hmm. or try to keep it as a secret. Nobody's yeah, yeah. talking. And it, it goes on and on. And before you know it, it's affecting her psychology. Mm -hmm. She's developing, she's growing in a different manner. She's having a, a particular mindset about mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it affects the culture and it affects our children and even the youths. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because Absolutely. You're, you're, yeah. you're patting down a culture that doesn't yeah. go Yeah, so well. how do you get the critical balance? So there's a silent culture, mm -hmm. if you like, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. there's a call-up culture. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically struggling more than achieving the critical balance. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you give people room. Mm -hmm. Because the whole point of social media, again, I mean, part of the point of social media mm -hmm. is that you have, you know, um, a platform. Mm -hmm. To express to yourself. To express yourself. Yeah. Yes, true. You know, but then... But well, then it really showed the, re the, the realness of who we are as humanity. And yeah. just shows we had a lot higher the esteem vanity. of who we are. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually showing the true nature of human beings. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're, when they're given we're, we're terrible. Yeah. 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 Now, the, the thing is that you know, Shola, you spoke to something there, and it doesn't even have to be extreme as rape. Mm. In that, people are just scared to speak up because they don't want wahala. Yes. Mm. Because everybody in that comment session will now be terrorizing yeah. you. Yeah. So there's a certain amount of lack of emotional resilience, mm. emotional mm. maturity, mm. and that speaks yeah. to how we're raising our children. Yes, mm. Absolutely. So something happened between, I think, my generation, I can't count for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the one, Abi, and the one after. Because there's a stark difference. Mm -hmm. We are still open to hearing other views and debating other views. We understand that we can't all agree, but That's we should it. all hear each there's other out. Because in that discussion yeah. Yeah. and in that debate mm. is how we create things for the better. Absolutely. Yeah. So we can yeah. disagree yeah. without being disagreeable. Without, yeah, mm. you know, disagree yeah. without, yeah, exactly. You see, I, 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 there's this program I host on TV, Lagos Talks at 1.3 FM, on radio rather, and I get, it got to a point where when I started the program, some people called in and they said to me, you're a, you're a breath of fresh air. What was it? Is it breath of fresh air? Mm -hmm. Breath of fresh air. Breath of fresh air. You get the point. You get the point. That you allow people air their views without nudging them mm -hmm. in a particular direction. Mm. And I think that's what, that's why, I, like you said, where do we draw the line? There is no drawing the line. Mm -hmm. The council culture is wrong. Call out is better. Mm -hmm. Call out is pointing at what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. council, council culture is more like stifling, oppressing, mm -hmm. bullying, mm -hmm. limiting, judging. they are big, judging, yeah. limiting someone's ability to even think along a particular line. Because, 
you don't need to agree with me, but I might be sense in what I'm saying. And when we're younger, mm. you hear what you're saying makes sense, but I don't agree with you. Yes. It's yeah. simple. That's, that's, <laughs> and that's independent thinking. That's it. Yes. And that's part of education. Yeah. What education should do is allow you to have your own opinion. That's it. But mm. then be sensible and intelligent enough to take other people's opinion, opinion. Mm. and not that's agree with it mm. and still not fight them. That's exactly. Well, yeah. All right. Fantastic. On last week's episode on the issue of special needs children in the Nigerian education system, Great Adventure Book says teachers need to learn how to reach every child, irrespective of how the child learns. That's the size of the show today. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The Advocate continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa join us next week same time on this station let's keep advocating for a better society bye bye now <laughs>